Hi LEGO fans! Once upon a time there was a concept called LEGO Ideas. LEGO Ideas allowed budding designers to submit their own LEGO creations. People like you and me could vote on our favourite designs, and once a design got 10,000 votes it would be considered by the LEGO panel for production. In true fairy tale style, Jason Alleman and Grant Davis submitted their idea for a pop-up book. The LEGO panel agreed it was a great idea, and today we've got the 23rd LEGO Ideas set. Today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 21315, pop-up book from LEGO Ideas. It's only a couple of months since we had the last LEGO book, that was set number 40291, Creative Personalities, based on Hans Christian Andersen. This takes that concept to a whole new level. Yes, we've got a realistic looking book, but this also contains a pop-up feature. The 859 piece part count also includes four minifigures and a micro figure. We've got the giant who's the same size as the other minifigures. Then to put the giant into perspective, we've got a micro figure jack. Finally, we have a grandmother, a wolf and little red riding hood. This selection of minifigures should give you a good idea of what to expect inside the book. And no, it's not a Stephen King story. In my opinion, the artwork doesn't do a great deal to sell this set. And the materials used to make the box don't have the usual premium feel. Perhaps that's part of the plastic block manufacturer's strategy to go more eco-friendly. Over on the back of the box we get a closer look at the fairy tale scenes that are included within the pop-up book. There's a very pleasing recreation of Grandma's cottage from Little Red Riding Hood. And then we get a recreation of the fairy tale world from Jack and the Beanstalk. There's a miniature landscape complete with clouds, and a very cool scissor action causes the beanstalk to rise above the clouds with a castle and giant at the top. Both scenes are interchangeable so we can swap them in and out of the book, and the really cool thing is that both fairy tale themes have a pop-up action. I did wonder whether we'd have to reuse parts to create the second interior, but it does look like we've got sufficient parts to create both, and I'm pretty pleased about that because this is quite an expensive set. It's going to set you back about 70 US dollars. To be fair, the part count is pretty high, and there is some weight to this box, it feels like you're getting a lot of stuff inside. I'm super excited to build the LEGO Ideas pop-up book, so without further ado, let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got six numbered bags of LEGO, a 160 page instruction booklet which also contains information about the fan designers Grant Davis and Jason Alleman and a bio on the rather eccentric looking Lego designers. There's also a brief but probably unnecessary synopsis of both fairy tales. And finally we have two 16x8 brown plates including a super nice custom print. This is a plate for the cover of the book entitled Once Upon a Brick and comes with some really fancy metallic printing. I'm going to go ahead and build the LEGO Ideas pop-up book, and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build! And here's the completed LEGO Ideas pop-up book configured for the Jack and the Beanstalk story. 
Build time for the whole set, including the Red Riding Hood scenes, was about 1 hour and 40 minutes. This thing is so cool! The whole thing folds away when you close the book, and reappears when you open it! We're going to take a close up look at this set in both configurations, and we're also going to take a detailed look at those minifigures. But before we do, I want to show you how this switches from one story to another. It's really quite simple. The first thing we're going to do is undo these anchor points here and remove the foldable scene. The holes you see in the bottom of the book allow you to snap in different scenes, and then the 1x2 uprights ensure the scene is held in the right position. This story has a really neat scissor lift beanstalk, which is controlled by this string here. To remove the beanstalk, we firstly detach this string, and then the whole beanstalk assembly simply clips out of place. There are a pair of clips on the bottom of the beanstalk which simply snap onto the bar on the base of the book. With the jack in the beanstalk scene removed, you can see the blank canvas that is the inside of the book. There's a double row of hinges which gives the spine a robust action, and there's a depression in the middle formed by a little window which gives the scene inside a little bit more space to fold up. From here, it's simply a case of installing the next storybook scene. We'll start by adding Grandma's bed, which is held in place by a row of studs. And then on the other side, we have a little table complete with a cute hot pink teapot and cup. To complete the scene, we just need to snap Grandma's cottage into place, which is done in the same way as Jack and the Beanstalk. Each end of the model has a peg which snaps into the book. Grandma's house has the very same pop-up action, which makes it an absolute joy. And with the addition of some minifigures, we have a very cool fairy tale theme. But before we focus on the interiors, let's take a look at the book on the outside. Even without the cool interiors and the pop up book function and those awesome minifigures, this thing does actually make quite a convincing book. There's a large and intricately printed nameplate on the front of the book entitled Once Upon a Brick. And if you turn this towards the light, you might see some of that printing is actually metallic gold. I can't say I've ever seen a designer's name on the outside of a build, so this is a great honour for Jason Alleman and Grant Davis, who fan designed the LEGO Ideas pop-up book. As you can see, they both have printed tiles on the outside of the book. As well as the printed tiles, we've also got some decoration around the outside of the book. This gives it a very premium feel, and I think it looks really good. It's also really nice to get a bunch of these quarter circle pieces. The spine of the book also has a bunch of brown tiles, and it wouldn't look out of place in a bookshelf. Although we have a bunch of mounting points on the inside of the book, none of these are visible from the outside. The design on the back is exactly the same as the front, except we don't get any more of those printed tiles. In order to create the pages for the book, and to create a nice boundary for the scene within, we've got a wall of bricks on each side which uses a really nice colour that gives the appearance of aged paper. Once you close the pop-up book, they do have quite a good appearance of pages. Grandma's Cottage creates a cute little scene to recreate the story. The garden is decorated with plant and flower elements on both sides. There's a window complete with opening shutters, an opening front door complete with keyhole, and I really like the orange and yellow colours used to create the roof, and the architectural detailing above the door. There's also a really nice stone effect chimney, and if you spin the house around and view it from the inside, you can see there's a fire in the fireplace complete with orange and yellow transparent bricks. Interior features are a little sparse, but we do have Grandma's bed, and the table complete with teapot and cup that we saw earlier. Grandma's bed is neatly designed so you can put a minifigure inside. Oh my Grandma, what big teeth you've got! All the better to eat you with! There's a little bit more decoration at the front of the build here with some grass and a flower. This is repeated on both sides of the build, and is used for both the Red Riding Hood and the Jack and the Beanstalk stories. Before we move on to Jack and the Beanstalk, let's just take a closer look at that mechanism. The folding part of the scene is attached quite loosely using one of these brown bars. This gives it a good amount of play, and allows it to fold up inside the book. In Grandma's Cottage, we've got three hinges which allow the cottage to fold completely in half. And within the hinged part, we've got a couple of cheese slopes here, which just control the extent to which the cottage can open. The mechanism is surprisingly simple, but truly ingenious. Reverting back to our blank canvas, let's set up the scene for Jack and the Beanstalk. The Beanstalk snaps into place, and has a neat scissor action controlled by a piece of string. The studs that were used to hold Grandma's table in place, also double up as a useful anchor point for the string that activates the Beanstalk. As the pop-up book is closed, the beanstalk folds neatly away. Reopening the book activates the scissor mechanism, raising the castle into the air. 
Exactly as it is in the story, the giant's castle sits on a cloud at the top of the beanstalk. And there are some useful studs here so you can stand the giant outside of his castle. Just keep in mind that the pop-up action doesn't work with the minifigure in place. At the base of the beanstalk there's a cute micro-scale town. We've got a little tree, a house, and it looks like we've got some steps leading up to the beanstalk. The beanstalk is decorated with pale green elements and leaves, which is a really nice way to hide the Technic beam that sits behind. The story is completed by adding another piece of pop-up scenery which shows the village at the bottom of the beanstalk. Whilst the Little Red Riding Hood story had only one folding component, Jack and the Beanstalk has two. As well as a giant who's a standard minifigure, we also get a micro figure Jack. He's perfectly scaled for the micro scale village at the bottom of the beanstalk. And Lego very generously gives us a spare as well. The pop-up village scene is a really nice thing, complete with rolling green hills, fluffy white clouds, and there's even a teeny tiny windmill on the top of the highest hill. It's a really neat multi-dimensional build and I love the use of orange wedges for the roofs of the houses. This is such a cool and innovative build that having some great minifigures is truly a bonus. Before we wrap up, let's take a closer look at each of these in turn. Starting off with Jack and the Beanstalk, this guy is the Giant. Now clearly he's a standard size minifigure, but compared to the micro scale Jack we're going to see in a moment, he is enormous. He's wearing plain brown pants here, and then he's got this elaborately printed vest top here. You can tell it's a vest top because you've got the yellow arms sticking out. Really nice metallic printing there on the front for the belt buckle, and then he's got this golden egg in a pouch in this kind of uh, almost like a bandolier or a sling around the front of his body. That also goes around the back and then we got the little goose there in the pocket on his shirt who laid the golden egg. He's also got some barrels here and some really nice printing there on the front of the shirt. Over on the back we've got a couple of Lego schools. I guess this is gonna be from the people that he grinds up to make his bread because giants of course grind bones to make the flour to make their bread. He's also got a couple of barrels here which might contain rum or something useful to him I guess and then there's a patch here suggesting some poor repair of his clothes. And I love this kind of shabby brownish red hair and then the really nice facial expression here. He's got this ginger beard which is really sharply printed uh, a mean face there and some very surprised kind of mean eyebrows there. He is such a great minifigure and that is of course the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk. Next we've got the teeny tiny micro scale Jack and he is beautifully printed even though I can't really see him through the viewfinder. Hopefully he's in focus uh, but he is absolutely tiny this micro scale fig. He has these tiny blue shorts on and then a little bit of printed yellow there for the legs and then he's got a kind of blue jacket. We've got some suspenders there holding up his shorts and a little blue shirt there. You can just see the detail at the collar. He has a, well you can't really call that a facial expression. He has a face which you can just about see and then there's a print there for his hair. On the back there we've got the, the standard mould here. You can see the backs of the legs made out like a minifigure and he is super awesome. The other nice thing about micro figures is that they sit really nicely in the hand of a minifigure and if I were Jack right now I would be terrified. Moving on to the next story, this is of course Little Red Riding Hood and she is adorable. This is a great minifig. She has the little brown legs on there but then between the legs and the body we've got a custom printed skirt piece which is super super nice. Really sharp printing there with this kind of leaf pattern and then on the front we've got the white piece coming down here which is going to be like the, um, the apron she's wearing and then a really nice printed front there. Lots of lacy frills there on the front and then the ties from the hood that she's wearing around the back. A little bit more printing there for all of the detail on her costume and then we have this cape which is one of the nice, uh, this has the kind of soft cape material here. Super nice piece of headgear here. As you can see we've got the hair built into that headpiece. It's a one piece dual molded thing and then a really cute facial expression there with the freckles. We don't have an alternate expression on the back but that is just super nice. Really really nice minifigure and a great addition to this set. Next we've got Little Red Riding Hood's grandma who is of course laid up in bed and that's why Little Red Riding Hood was coming to visit her. She is wearing these pink PJs which have the plain pink pants there and then a really nice print there for the 
pyjama top. A uh, little bit of detailing there around the neck for the ties and some frills on there. A little bit more detailing around the back, more frills and that sort of thing. Uh, but the facial expression, I've got a feeling I've seen that before in another minifigure. We do have the hairpiece here, which is another recycled part, I'm pretty sure. Uh, really nice there with the bun on the back there, some really nice sculpting. No alternate expression on the minifigure. And that is a really nice Grommar minifig. Uh, it doesn't look very happy there with the facial expression. I do like the spectacle she's wearing, but yeah, really nice minifig. And finally, we have the wolf. This is an awesome minifigure. I really like the head on this. Now, the head is one piece. If we take that off, you can see it's one molded piece. So there's no minifigure head underneath. I'm gonna put that back on. And this is so cool. I mean, firstly, it's a great mold which is awesome. Just look at all that hair running down the back there, like the mane of the uh, the wolf. Uh, but then the printing on the front is just so cool. We've got these white teeth, and then the wolf is even wearing lipstick to make himself look like Grummer. We've got the black nose on there, and then he's wearing Grummer spectacles. That is so cool. Um, now, he has the same design of pyjamas that Grummer was wearing. I think he probably tore them off Grummer, and that's why they're all ripped up like this. Uh, so we can see tears in the fabric and then the fur of the wolf showing through. Similarly on the back there we've got the same kind of base print but then all of these tears, that is so cool. And that my friends is a simply stunning wolf minifigure. I love this thing. So that was set number 21315, pop-up book, the 23rd set from LEGO Ideas. I've got to say, I'm a really big fan of LEGO Ideas. I love the innovation that the fan designers bring to this range, and this has to be one of my favourite sets that I've seen for quite some time. I like the realism of the book. The minifigures included in the set are absolutely stunning. It was great not only to get the Jack and the Beanstalk scene, but also Grommar's house and the accessories that came with it. My favourite part of the whole set has to be the Beanstalk. The mechanism used to make the Beanstalk pop up is so simple, but so well executed. But one thing I think this set does really well is to inspire the builder. Yes, we've got two really nice pre-built designs, but it wouldn't be difficult to use this as a blank canvas and create your own scenes. I think Jason and Grant knocked it out of the park with this concept, and it's no surprise that LEGO chose this design to run to production. Jason has his own YouTube channel called JK Brickworks, and he has some cool videos on his channel showing you how to customise this set. The only problem with this set is that both stories are very cool and I would love to have a second copy so that I can show it in both configurations. I really hope you enjoyed this LEGO Ideas unboxing, speed build and review video as much as I did making it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below, say hi in the comments and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.